Hello and welcome to surveillance-video.com. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to set up a complete system. When setting up your system, you're going to need five things. You're going to need your camera, connector cables, your power supply, DVR, and monitor. Once you have your cameras mounted and your cables run, you are going to want to start connecting everything together. First start by connecting the BNC connected to your camera to the Siamese power video cable. Then connect your power cables together. On the other end you are going to want to connect the Siamese power video cable to your power supply. And then plug the power supply into an outlet. If your cameras feature the ability to be powered by dual voltage, you might not have a standard power jack. In that situation you would have two open faced wires to connect from your camera to the jack. You would use a pigtail to connect the open face leads to the power jack. Now some of you might be using a DC power box. First things first, make sure the power is completely off when connecting everything together. What our subject is now holding is known as a pigtail. It has a power jack on one end and two open face leads on the other. The red is your positive and the black is your negative. The first thing that you will have to do is loosen all the screws on your circuit board. Once you have them loose enough, insert the wires, make sure they are not touching so nothing gets damaged when you turn the power on, tighten the screws, and repeat this step as needed. Then connect the Siamese power video cables to your pigtails. Once you are finished connecting everything on the inside of your DC power supply, there is an outlet on the side of the box. Plug a power cable into the outlet on the side of the box and then connect it into the wall outlet. And then you take the BNC at the end of the Siamese power video cable and plug it into the back of the DVR in the camera in section. Many of you will be using an LCD monitor that connects to your DVR using a VGA cable. You will plug your VGA cable into the back of your monitor, take the other end of the VGA cable, and then plug that into the back of the DVR. Now some monitors don't use a VGA connection. Instead, you would connect the DVR and monitor together using a BNC cable. You would connect the BNC from the video out of the DVR to the video in on the back of your monitor. Let's say you are using a monitor that has multiple video inputs available. Connect the BNC from the video out on your DVR to one of the video inputs on the back of your monitor. And when you set up your monitor, make sure you have the input selected on your monitor that you connected the DVR to. If you want to connect your DVR to view it on the internet, connect an Ethernet cable from the LAN port on your DVR to the LAN port on your network device. Okay, so let's do a quick review on how to connect your system. First, connect the Siamese power video cables from your cameras to the camera in section on your DVR. Then, connect the power supplies. Next, connect the DVR to the monitor using either a VGA or BNC cable. And if you want to view your DVR system remotely via internet, connect an ethernet cable to your network devices from LAN to LAN. Some DVRs also allow you to save your footage using a USB device. The USB slot on the front of your DVR is where you would connect this device. After you have mounted all of your cameras and you set up your entire system, the next thing you have to do is program in your settings to your DVR. Right now you are watching a video from a monitor connected to the EVL404 channel DVR from Nivico. This is what the main menu for the DVR looks like. Here you can choose the submenus to change your display, camera, motion, record, system, network, schedule, and alarm settings. The display menu is how you would change the settings of how your video broadcasts on your monitor. This is where you would change your DVR's camera settings. If you have a camera that has a menu or dip switches, this will not change those settings, but it changes how the DVR interprets that camera. If you are using mixed camera brands, you can calibrate them so the cameras match. If you wanted a camera to be recorded but no one be able to see it on the monitor, switch the camera to covert. You can also name each camera for their location. 
This is where you change your DVR's motion settings. This affects how your DVR responds to motion. You can set how long you want the DVR to record for after the motion is detected, sensitivity, and motion group, and you can set this for every camera. This is where you change your DVR's recording settings. This particular model can shoot a maximum of 120 pictures per second with a resolution of 360 by 240. The amount of pictures per second is divided to all four cameras, so that would make it 30 pictures per second for each camera, which is standard normal speed in video. You are able to mix and match how you want each camera to record. You can set each camera to record at a different picture quality and change the picture per second speed. This is also where you tell the DVR to record when motion is detected. Let's say your business is open Monday to Friday and you want the best quality during your hours of operation, but you are not too concerned with what's going on when the business is closed. The scheduling feature on the DVR can help you get the most time out of your DVR's hard drive. You can program your DVR to record at a higher resolution and less pictures per second during your business hours, which will give you more detail. If you wish to view your DVR from a remote location, first you have to set up your network settings. First, you would need to set up your internet protocol address settings. Doing this will allow you to be able to watch your DVR anywhere in the world. All you need is the information on this page and a high-speed internet connection. Under the email section of your network settings, this is where you would set up your DVR to send email notifications if a motion sensor is tripped. The email will contain text, not images. The Dynamic Domain Name Service section will make its user's life much easier. It automatically tells the domain that your DVR's IP address had changed, so you will not need to tell your domain every time it changes. Under the Miscellaneous section, the only selection present is the bandwidth. This selection designates how much bandwidth your DVR will use at any given moment. If you use a broadband connection, you will not need to change this. The system menu is where you would change the system settings of your DVR. This is where you would change the recording resolution size and also choose to turn the password on or off. The resolution can be changed to four different choices. CIF 4 channel, which is 360 by 240, and it can record a maximum of 120 pictures per second. Field 4 channels, which is 720 by 240, which can record a maximum of 60 pictures per second. Frame 4 channel, which is 720 by 480, which can record a maximum of 30 pictures per second. and Frame Plus SIF, which records 720x480 for camera number 1 and 320x240 for all the other cameras. In this setting, the DVR records 60 pictures per second. Here we are switching between camera number 1 and camera number 2 on our DVR. This is where you set your time and date. This is where you set up your system account settings. You can set up to five users and one administrator. Recording disk options, automatic system updates, and basic system information. This is the alarm record setup menu. This is where you would set hardwired sensors such as magnetic contacts and motion detectors to the back of the DVR that would trigger the DVR to record. This is the alarm setup section. This is where you would select how many cameras you want to record and how long you want them to record for after the alarm is triggered. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can visit our website at www.surveillance-video.com or you can call us at 1-800-955-5201.